Welcome back to the Homestyle Glen Butcher's YouTube channel. My name's Jared, and I'm just gonna run you through how to make up a cure. So I'll make up this cure, I'll sit it back in the fridge, we'll come back 24 hours later once it's nice and cool, and then we'll pickle a box of eye around. So it'll just be a rundown on how you actually make the cure, and then how you're gonna actually pump the meat, which is gonna be used universal. You can use that on eye around, pork, lamb, whatever you want there, venison. But we'll get into it, let's get cracking. Okay, so what we've got here is a pineapple cure. So it does have your formulation on it, it gives you your ratios. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put 45 litres of water and four and a half kilos of salt. So we're just using a flossy salt, it's all food grade, and we get it in there and we give it a mix up. So you just wanna really stir it in hard. The actual pineapple cure itself will wanna sort of granulize and, and stick together. So you wanna get in there with your hand. It's always best to do it when the water's obviously just straight out of the tap not as cold. If you want to try and mix it once it's down to zero, one degrees, it's going to be pretty painful on your hands. So yeah, we'll get into it now. We'll put this in there and then we'll add the salt. Then we'll add the 45 litres of water. So I've got my buckets here, which all hold 10 litres just to speed up the process. I'll fill one while I tip one in. And in the end, I'm just going to do a half a bucket. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but make sure you don't go under with your ratio. You'd rather do 47, 48 litres of water rather than do 40 or 41, just to get a better actual ratio and better mix. Okay, so I just start getting these buckets full of water. That way, as I tip one in, the next one's refilling for me. So what I'll do now is I'll just open up this bag of pineapple cure and I'll tip it in and then I'll add me four and a half scoops of salt. So just a word of warning. So when you're tipping in this pineapple cure, don't sort of just let it buff up in your face because it is hazardous to breathe in. So yeah, you try and avoid that, either wear a mask or just stick back a bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tip in my salt here. So I'm using these one kilo scoops. So I'll do four and a half of these. That'll get me my four and a half kilos of salt or thereabouts. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you do wanna keep it over four kilos. Okay, so now I'm ready to start tipping this water in. I've got one bucket ready, so I'll tip that in. Once again, try not to sort of splash up that dust off the actual pineapple cure. Once you've got one bucket in, it'll be fine. And then as my second bucket's already filling, I'll just wait for that to fill up and then continue the process till I've got the four and a half buckets of water in there. So there's all my buckets of water. So this is my last one here, and it's all ready to mix now. So just make sure you sort of get in there and mix it thoroughly. You don't want anything left undissolved at the bottom. It will sort of, it will clump together and want to go really like granular and turn into little pebbles or rocks. So get in there, make sure you mix it really, really thoroughly. So you can see, obviously nothing's dissolved yet, but as you stir it, not the funnest job in the world, but needs to be done. Now also, if you do want to do this at home, you don't obviously have to stick to making the whole packet up and doing a 45 litre cure. You can break your ratio down and use half your cure and obviously do half the amount of water and just put the ratios down. So as I'm mixing this, I can feel that it is dissolving, but if I sort of wait, there is a little bit of salt there that hasn't mixed in yet. Now the main reason for wanting to put this in the fridge and let it cool down and get down to temperature overnight is, I mean, right now I can feel that this is cold. It's comfortably below seven or eight degrees, but by putting it in the fridge, it'll get down below that five degrees. And just for obviously health and safety reasons and you know food hygienic reasons, you want the meat as cold as possible. You don't want it to heat up. I mean, we're gonna be pulling it out and handling it outside of the fridge or having this cold water being pumped into it. It's not gonna, heat up the internal temperature of the meat at all. And then you get a better shelf life once it is pickled. You can feel that it's almost 100% resolved now. Yeah, I can't 
can't feel anything left down at the bottom, so that's all good to go. Chuck her in the fridge and we'll get back to it tomorrow. So we're just going to fill up our pickle pump here. So this is an onga pump and we just need to prime it. So we need to put some fresh water in the top here. Okay, so you can measure out the water. If you want to measure out the liters, do so. But at the end of the day, to prime it, this reservoir needs to be filled up, no air left in it. So I just fill it until it overflows give it a second and then I refill it again just to make sure there's no air. Okay, so now that I've filled it up with water, I can put this cap on and then put the siphon end of the hose in a bucket and start to run the hose just to make sure that the pipes are flushed out with cold water. I'll just run it a second just to make sure the pipes are fully flushed. And now I'll just run the nozzle into the actual pickle tub just to make sure that there's no water in the pipes and it's full of actual pickle. So I like to use my boning hook here just to hold it, just easier than actually using your hands. If you hold it with your hands, it can slip out. So either use a boning hook or a sausage hook, or if you need to, if you're at home or something like that, you can use a coat hanger, whatever's gonna hold onto the meat just to make it a bit easier. So when it comes to pickling itself, you wanna make sure you get a really even coverage and you pickle all the way through. I like to start injecting from the top and just work my way around and then just jump down a couple of inches at a time just to make sure that I've been really thorough and made sure that I've got pickle injected all the way through the meat. If you're not thorough on the way you inject it, the brine won't actually penetrate properly. So then when you go to cut your meat, you'll see that you'll have a gray spot where it hasn't been pickled properly. That's obviously not ideal, meaning that half of it's not going to be actually pickled. So you'll have just roast beef surrounded by corned beef. Now that same thing applies if you're doing pork, lamb, goat, venison, whatever you're doing. If you don't get a thorough enough actual injection, the pickle won't do its work all the way through. One thing I might add is you don't want to actually inject too much brine at once. If you do push too much in there, you'll cause the meat to swell too much and it can cause tearing inside the actual Durello or whatever meat you're using at the time. So it's best just to really control how much you're letting in at a time and sort of watch the meat expand, but don't let it sort of explode. So now I'll move on to doing this silver side. So the silver side has the Durello or the eye around on the side of it here. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure I've got nice even coverage, injections all the way around the eye around before moving onto the silver side. That'll just ensure I don't miss any spots and leave myself any unpickled parts. You'll notice here that with the silver side being a bit bigger bit of meat, I will sort of rotate the meat around and I'll pickle it from the back as well. That way I'm just covering all bases and making sure that I have got a full even coverage of pickle through the meat. So 
So if you're gonna be doing this at home yourself, whether it be pork, beef, lamb, goat, doesn't matter, the method you'll have to do there is just more or less pierce the meat with a skewer, a rod or a knife and just put a few holes in it and then just sit it in your brine. It's gonna have to sit a lot longer than seven days. It more or less will have to be two to three weeks, but that's just to allow that brine to really penetrate into the meat and do its job and cure the actual product. All right, so that's all done. I've pickled me outside and me Jurellos. Now you can use that same method on boning pork legs or bone and roll pork legs, shoulders, lamb legs, even some venison. So I'll leave this sit in the fridge now. It'll be sitting there for probably seven to 10 days. You can leave it longer, but we here leave it for generally seven to 10 days and then we'll cut it, cry back it and process it. So we'll come back and reassess once it's been in the brine for a week and then we'll go through the cutting and the cry back and process. Okay, so we're seven days later now. It's been sitting there for the week and I've just got Blake here to cut and pack it. So he's gonna pull them out and just show you what the meat looks like on the inside after sitting for seven days. You'll see here it's got a visible change in color obviously and then also in the inside will be a nice vibrant pink. If there was any spots where we didn't pickle it properly, you'd see gray spots. So now he's just going to take off this eye round off the side of the silver side. So it'll be the same thing once he's got that off. He will just cut that in half, just portion cut them, we'll cry back them down and put them on display in the window. If you're doing this at home, at this point here, instead of boiling it up for actual silver side, you could alternatively smoke it, which is the same method you're going to do if you're going to do pickled pork. So if you wanted to make bacon or ham, you do the exact same thing we've done here, but then you would follow up by putting it into a smoke oven rather than cryovacking it or boiling it. So just remember this method can be adapted to be used at home if you're not in an actual butcher shop. So you don't have to use a pickle pump or a pickle tub. You can use a bin or a bucket and just by putting some holes into that meat and letting it sit in that cure longer, you'll still get the same outcome. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can put this method to use at home and buy some cure and salt from your local butcher, whether you're gonna use meat from the shop or you're gonna use something you've taken in the bush yourself. Thanks again, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe.